Okay, welcome to this video on some uh, assistance with the wine glass folio task. I've been asked particularly about part C and part D, so I'll go through both of, both of those with you. Um, so firstly for part C, it's talking about an ellipsoid shape, or a watermelon, um, and we're given the formula for that particular ellipsoid, and we're also given some um, heights. I haven't listed all of them here, but the heights of these lines here. And we'll talk a bit about what they mean. So there's three calculations we're going to do here. The first one that you'll do is using the formula of an ellipsoid. So you just need to put that into Google, find out what the formula for the volume of an ellipsoid is, and calculate it. Okay, it's a simple formula. Just like how before we were doing formulas of cylinders and we did formula of a cone, now we're doing the formula for the volume of an ellipsoid. So you're just putting the numbers into the formula and calculating it. So that's the first way that you're going to do that. The second way is we're going to get a lower estimate and an upper estimate. Okay, so we're using here both our um, knowledge of integration and area under the curve. So we're demonstrating that. And the way we're going to do that is we're using these numbers over here. So we're trying to think of an ellipsoid as a sum of cylinders. So here I can see I've got you know, a smaller cylinder plus the next size cylinder plus the next size cylinder. So it's an approximation of an ellipsoid. It's not going to give us an exact value, but it is a way that we can approximate it. And then these numbers here are the respective radiuses of those cylinders, okay? Radius being the distance from the center outwards. So the calculation that you'll be doing then for the sum of cylinders will be pi times the radius squared. Now the radius is these particular lengths that we have here, so pi times 6.4 squared. And the height is two. All of these cylinders have a height of two times two. Okay, and you'll do that for all of those particular values. That'll take you to there. And that would be the volume of half of, a, half of the watermelon. So then you'll just times your final answer by two. So this would be the first cylinder plus the volume of the second cylinder would be pi. Uh, the radius is 8.7 squared. And then again, times the height, which is two. And you'll find there'll be some common factors there. So pi is common, two is common, and we can pull them out the front to make that calculation easier. But we're just thinking of it as a sum of cylinders. So there should be two calculations. One will be for lower rectangles, and one will be for upper rectangles. But that's how we're gonna go about doing that one. Okay, then the last process we do is using integration. So this is the formula we've been using here. We've, we've discovered this, we've con or we're testing this conjecture, that the integral from a to b of pi times f of x squared is the volume of that shape when we rotate that function around the x-axis. So what we're doing here with the ellipsoid is we're thinking about rotating it around the x-axis, rotating it around the x-axis, and it, we're gonna see if this value we get using this is equal to the value we got from the formula. We know this is correct, we're testing if this is correct. That's our conjecture. So you're given this formula here. So you need to rearrange that to get y by itself. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, you should be pretty good at algebra. You need to rearrange that to get y by itself and then you're just putting it into this formula here, okay? over the appropriate intervals, all right? From minus 14 to positive 14 or whatever it might be. You might go from zero to 14 and multiply it by two as it is symmetric about the y-axis. But we're rearranging that to get y by itself. We're putting it into this formula, okay? We're, again, we're testing that conjecture. And what you're gonna find is the value you get for C and the value you got for A are exactly the same and that they lie in between your lower estimate and your upper estimate. That's what we expect, that's what you should get. Talk uh, now about part D. So 
in part D, you're designing a wine glass of some variety. So it gives you very strict instructions to begin with. It wants you to investigate root X or K root X, where K could be any number. Um, and that sort of describes this kind of curve here. Um, I've put some other functions here, but I'll talk about them more in a moment. So firstly, we're just talking about the volume of the wine glass, okay? Wine doesn't go into the stem normally. Maybe there's some special glasses where that happens, but we're just talking about the bowl. So what we're doing is it's told, we're told what are the dimensions such that it holds 100 milliliters. So that means we're going to integrate this function, so the square root of x, from 0 to k. We're trying to find how high does the bowl need to be? How high does it need to be so that the volume, so that when we rotate this square root of x function around the x-axis, it holds 100 mils or close to 100 mils. Now I've put this up here, one milliliter is a centimeter cubed. So all of our numbers here are in terms of centimeters. So this is the calculation you'd be doing. Integral from zero to k of pi times the square root of x squared being equal to 100, you need to solve that for k. All right, that'll be the value of how high this wine glass is. In part B, it gets you to investigate the same one, okay? But it says, what, how much glass is there going to be if the glass is two millimeters thick? So we said all of our measurements here are in centimeters, and we want to know how much glass is being used if it's two millimeters thick. So that means you'll be sketching a new function, okay, which is just gonna be the square root of x as well, but plus 0.2 because it's shifted up two millimeters or 0.2 centimeters. And now the volume, we're not talking about the volume of, the, of the, how much wine it can hold, we're talking about this volume here when we rotate that around the x-axis. And so that would be, that would be the square root of it, uh, the integral from zero to whatever the k value is we've found, it should be about seven or eight. Uh, so the integral from zero to k of the top function, take the bottom function, isn't it? It's gonna be pi times the top function, which in this case is the square root of x plus 0 0.2, take away the bottom function, which is the square root of x and squared with regards to x. Okay, so we're using that same formula where we're rotating a function around the x-axis. This is our function here, the top one, take away the bottom one. So that's what we'll be doing in part uh, B there. So they're the very strict instructions you have. But part C gets you to explore different wine glasses. So that means you could do a variation of the square root of x. Could be three root x, 0 0.5 root x. It's gonna change the shape. All right, so we sort of want you to investigate probably a red wine glass, okay, which are generally quite large and globular, uh, or a champagne flute, so sort of long and skinny, pretty similar to this. The other obvious statement to make is a, a, a standard serve of wine is 150 mils. So having a glass that's 100 mils isn't practical. So you're gonna need to change those measurements to find, find a suitable size. Look at your own wine glasses, you can model off of those. Um, but you need to have the equation of a stem. So here I've just got the equation of a straight line. You could have a curve there to describe the stem. And here I've got, um, again, uh, it's a linear equation to describe the base. But if we were to find the total volume of, of glass, of this wine glass that I've got here, we would be integrating this base Okay, and I'll make up some measurements here. Let's say the stem is 10 centimeters long, so the distance from this point to this point is 10, so from zero to minus 10. And I'll say the base is um, a centimeter thick, so that's minus 11 there. And um, we said this is about seven or eight, so I'll just put eight there. So if you were to find the total volume of the glass that makes up this wine glass, you would be doing each separate inter integral. So the first one is we're rotating the base around the x-axis. So that would be the integral from minus 11 to minus 10 of pi times this function, okay? Minus 4x takes 16, that's just one I made up. Minus 4x takes 16 squared. 
Um, so that, that would be the base, okay? And then you have the, in, the integral of the stem, and we're integrating the stem from minus 10 to zero pi times the function of the stem. The function of the stem is just 0 0.5 squared with regards to x, and then plus the, uh, the function of the actual bowl that the wine fits in itself. So you'd be doing three separate uh, equations there and that would calculate for you how much glass you're using in this wine glass because that's something that we can investigate. I've written down here a wine bottle as well. You've got lots of room. You can take this investigation wherever you want to. So these things are very structured, okay? These are the calculations you'll be doing. But where you're going to get your A and where you're going to show... Um, good understanding is when you're taking it further and you're creating these things yourself. So good luck with it.